Skip Bayless, Molly, I'm going to tell you it's owner Jim Ersay. And that's because of the personnel that he's put in place or that or has allowed to be put in place. The finger points directly at his doorstep. If he were a guy that just cut the check and minded his own business and left football up to the football guys, then I would point to finger at Grigson and Chuck Pagano. But he appears to be hands on. He appears to be cognizant of the personnel that is picked. He's clearly intimately involved to the point where he would be in the locker room after the game. He would be arguing with Grigson. Lord knows what he has said to Coach Chuck Pagano. The list goes on and on. But let's be very, very clear. The Colts are an absolute mess. And don't think for one second that the guy who's one of the biggest supporters of Andrew Luck, that would happen to me, Skip, me, Skip, that I'm not in any way absolving him uh, from his doldrums. This guy has played in five games. He has thrown eight interceptions, two included yesterday. They are one and four without him. I'm sorry, with him, okay? The other two victories they have are without him. They are winless against everyone outside of the weak and depleted and the embarrassingly inept AFC South. Then you take into account the personnel. You've got this guy, Costanzo. He is your left tackle, Skip Bayless. I'm just looking at some of the stuff here in terms of the amount of penalties. Five holding penalties, three false, start, three false starts, holding false starts, whatever the case may be. This is a guy you gave $42 million to. He's your left tackle. He ain't getting it done. Andrew Luck ain't getting it done. Andre Johnson has had only one good game this year. Frank Gore isn't resonated, resonating nearly as much as we thought that he would. Trent Cole, who you acquired, he doesn't have a single sack for you. Harriman, your offensive lineman that you brought in, was benched after two games and was on the sideline in street clothes yesterday. Veterans who were brought here at an exorbitant amount of dollars, I might add, to make huge contributions are making literally close to none. And, it, and, these, and if, you, if your veterans can't produce for you, what level of leadership can they provide for you? Because if they were paid to come here and make a contribution and be veterans, we all know you can't lead men if they're looking at you and saying, well, what the hell are you doing? They can't, that can't happen. So when you look at it from that perspective, it's an absolute mess. Of course, Andrew Luck is primarily responsible as a player on the field. Of course, Chuck Pagano is primarily responsible because his post-game pet talks clearly ain't working. Okay? We understand that. And then you got undefeated Carolina and Denver coming up on your schedule, which doesn't look good for the coach. But ultimately, I have to look at Grigson and the personnel that he's brought in play, and I have to believe if he went out there and got these age-old veterans skipped, it had to be because the owner sat up there and said, we need some veterans to go along with the youth in an Andrew Locke, a Fleener, Dwayne Allen and these boys. We need some veterans up in here. And the owner had something to do with it. I would say to you, Airsay and Grigson, definitely Grigson. But I got a feeling Airsay might have been in his face telling him what he wanted done. And that may have influenced some of the decisions that he made. I could be wrong about that part. It could be all on Grigson, which is why the owner was in his face yesterday in the locker room, according to the reports. But I'm inclined to believe that Ersay had something to do with the personnel that Grigson brought on board. Mm. I will agree with you. The Colts seem to have a meddling owner who obviously had his own off the field issue that he's dealing yes. with. You know where I'm going to go with this. What, whatever responsibility we're talking about, whatever blame we're talking about, starts and finishes with the franchise quarterback, Andrew Luck. This has been a pet peeve of mine, the premature coronation of Andrew Luck on this show for three years, not two, but three years. Just show me, Andrew. I, I got nothing against you. If you show me, I will tell the world you are that guy. You're Andrew Locke, as in first ballot Locke Hall of Famer. I keep waiting and I don't see it because Stephen A., do you realize Andrew Locke's QBR 
has gone down each of his four seasons, gone down, yes. down, down. He's at 38 he, now. He's regressed to 38 on a scale of 0 to 100. 38 QBR right now. As you know, and I, I feel like I'm beating dead statistics here, but his rookie year he had the second most turnovers in the league to Mark Sanchez. Last year he had the second most turnovers in the league to Jay Cutler. Now he's tied for second in total turnovers in the National Football League. And as you know, he's lost all three of his home games. And thanks to his two interceptions yesterday at home, this team fell behind the visiting New Orleans Saints 27 to nothing. Then Andrew Locke heated back up, as we saw against Kansas City in the home playoff game, that he dug them out of the hole that he initially dug. And he, he was pretty great in the second half, wound up throwing for 333 yards. They actually got back in the game that they lost 27 to 21. Okay, but what happened when it mattered? 27 to nothing happened at home. I hear, oh, it's his shoulder. He's still fighting with his bum shoulder. Well, then don't play because his velocity looks okay to me. It looks, it looks normal to me. Then I hear over and over again, ah, they just can't protect him. He hasn't had a, I, I brought this up, clean, uh, Steve Young said a couple of weeks ago, hasn't had a clean pocket all year. Uh, trust me, against the Patriots, it felt like he had a bye week to throw each time he dropped back. That's how much time he had. And look, Matt Hasselbeck stepped in and had zero interceptions in two games against two bad teams, albeit Jacksonville at Texans. But the at Texans game, I, I thought that was pretty good on the part of Matt Hasselback. He showed you how he could get rid of the ball on time to the right guy, even if it's a dink or a dunk, and you can win the football game. And right now, it's hard for this team to overcome the mistakes made by its franchise quarterback. I don't know what's going on. Is it, if he's hurt, they should sit him down. But the problem is, as you well know, they're in such, this is the big benefit of Andrew Luck. He's in such a bad division, and has been for all four years, they're, they're still in the lead. They're, they're three and Soul four. Possession they're they're, the they're lead. leading the AFC South at three and four, so they can't, they can't lose for winning or win for losing, however you want to look at it. The, the worse they play, the better it seems to get, because this is a pathetic division. If they were in the NFC South, Lord help them. They, they'd be having a hard time right now. They, their season would be basically over. So this is your Super Bowl team, just the way it was a whole lot of people's Super Bowl team. Andrew Luck was the preseason MVP pick by a whole lot of analysts out there, and he regresses, yet they're still afloat because all they have to do is win this division. They're going to get a playoff game somehow, some way. Well, so I, go ahead. Here's my deal, Skip. I'm not going to argue with you about Andrew Luck and his performance. It's undisputable. He has not been nearly as impressive as, as anybody expected him to be. He's been a turnover machine, and they're one and four with him in the lineup. That can't be disputed. But when you hear me articulate all the other problems that they have, Skip Bayless, I don't know how you can sit there and look at him and not look at a Chuck Pagano, not look at a Ryan Grigson, okay, not look at a Jim Ayersay. This is the 20th ranked team defensive, defensively in the NFL. They are 28th in yards allowed. They are 23rd in yards allowed against the rush, 28th in, large, in yards allowed against the pass. Yesterday, to Mark Ingram, they gave up 143 yards on 14 carries. Skip Bayless, that's more than 10 yards per carry. That, they, that, the New, that the Indianapolis Colts defense surrendered. I don't know how we can ignore that. Yes, you're talking about Costanzo being paid the money, you know, that he's being paid, and you got holding penalties and false starts to the point where you're being interviewed at the locker and you are degrading yourself. Nobody's arguing with you because we know you're right. You stink, you're this, you're that. This is what he said about himself. Nobody said a word because they know he's right. Andre Johnson, he's 34 years old. He's gone from Houston. He comes over here. He's had one good game, which is against his old team, Tex the Texans, which we will discuss later on in the show. Yep. You got Frank Gore averaging 4.6 yards a carry. Why is he not receiving the ball more? 
You got T.Y. Hilton, 150 yards on four receptions. Skip, he was targeted 15 times. Something's wrong with that picture. T.Y. Hilton targeted 15 times and only catches the ball four times? Something's wrong with that picture. I'm simply saying to you, Andrew Luck, without question, can play better. He should play better. I don't see something physically deficient about him. I don't see his IQ having diminished in any way. Something just doesn't seem to be clicking. And when you've got Harriman's being benched and you've got, uh, you know, when, you, when you've got Trent Cole doesn't have a sack on the entire season, when you see the different areas all over the place where the problems are taking place, that's not the quarterback. The quarterback could help alleviate it. He could help negate and offset it. And the fact that Andrew Luck is not doing so is definitely an indictment against him. He's in his fourth year, been a divisional player, a wild card divisional player, AFC championship game. Damn it, he was progressing until this year. Don't know what happened. But it is clear that the problems are all over the place. And if you're Ersay, I, I, I mean, he might be a part of the problem, but we all know that you can't fire the owner. So I really believe that somehow, some way, we may see the potential, a potential house cleaning in the making. Because you might have to get rid of a whole bunch of people. And I'm not advocating that Grigson be fired or that Pagano be fired. I'm simply saying it looks possible because that usually happens when there are problems everywhere. And the Colts have problems everywhere. I'm with you. We'll see luck against Cam on Monday night football. But meanwhile, the G-Men are on top of the NFC East. But is it still anyone's division to take? Will New York hold off their division rivals when all is said and done? Eric Allen is in the house. He'll offer some insight when we return. Stay here.